All right, welcome back again. One more glorious hour to be here for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, oh, Lord, excuse me, I was just contemplating on the thought that just hit me. Um, it's good to be here again, um, welcoming you to another hour of uh, power in God's eternally powerful and life-saving word. Um, we've been embarking on a theme titled God's Hospitality. Uh, we've been embarking on it. If you want to catch any of the old messages, I think it goes dates back to the beginning of November last year. Uh, the latest is part 16. I've lost count. Um, and we have a sub theme that we've been journeying under as well, which is the full, it's in parentheses, small f, small u, small l, words that end in f u l, the full hospitality of Jesus Christ. We have been on the segment of Jesus, who is God, is mindful of everyone out there and everyone in the world. And we have broken up the theme of mindful under three segments. He's mindful of your past uh, sins, your present sins. And we started last week on uh, future uh, sins. Uh, he's mindful of your past, your present, and of your future. Um, the Lord does not want you to have a future uh, condemned to hell. He wants you to have a future with him, uh, having eternal life in his heaven. I'd like to thank God the Father, first and foremost, uh, for uh, choosing, electing, and uh, having me be one to be here as a living witness um, in Christ Jesus, uh, God the Son, who I thank for coming here almost 2,000 years ago to set the record straight. All mankind are sinners from the very beginning with Adam till now, till he decides it's over. And he's, according to scripture, comes back again. He came to uh, please God the Father uh, in having mankind have peace with him once again uh, by uh, suffering in a manner that in human recorded history has never been, um, sacrificing himself in a way that uh, people, would not, people would not do. He went up to a cross and took all the sins of mankind up there. And he was buried physically. And our sins buried, gone. And on the third day when he rose, our sins never rose. Now, if you don't surrender your heart, uh, the word in Romans 10 says if you confess out your mouth because the words out your mouth come from your heart so if you surrender your heart if you confess out your mouth on uh, Jesus Christ you know going up to that cross dying for you being buried and being resurrected and believing it in your heart um, if you do that you're saved but if you do not surrender to Jesus Christ Surrender your life, surrender your all for him to save you by coming to him as a spiritual convict, <laughs> spiritual sinner, okay? A sinner uh, who is in need of a savior, and that be him. If you don't humble yourself and trust that he can save you, he can deliver you, he can get you, uh, you're here, God, God in his heaven is here. Jesus is that plank that we walk across into his heaven. We trust that Jesus uh, is the way, the only way. We trust in what he did on the cross, being buried and being resurrected. 
then he will save us. And then we will have the Holy Spirit, um, God, the Holy Spirit, a El Capitan, Dan, Dan. Got to salute the captain. Uh, excuse me. Drop my uh, recording device on Facebook here. Uh, hope it's still going, but nonetheless, um, uh, saluting God, the Holy Spirit, the captain of the second Ark of Grace that sails it along onto the seashores of glory to be with the Lord of glory in eternal glory. Uh, you get the Holy Spirit. He's the one that leads, guides, and directs you once we humble ourselves and allow him to be Lord. Um, he'll teach us how to have a mind and a heart like Jesus. And all Jesus asks is three things. That we listen through here into this mind that needs to be transformed into the mind of Jesus. Okay, through the Holy Spirit who teaches us that we learn that which we listen to and that we live it. We have to listen, learn, and live. And we live to give. And we give because we live. And we live in Jesus Christ and Him in us. Once we surrender to Jesus Christ. So I thank God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I'd like to thank. Uh, Dr. Thomas Blackwell, CEO of KTYM, for once again, when I pressed that little buzzer outside, he uh, hit the alarm and sent me and let me in one more time to be here. As so I'd like to thank him, a uh, good brother in Christ, um, and a good friend. I'd like to thank my family, wishing uh, my sister Kathy's doing better, her husband Caleb and son, uh, son Caleb and Husband Julio, whoo hoo, she's gonna get me for that one. Um, they're doing better too. Like to blow some kisses to my mom, to Leah Hannah, Hannah in uh, Texas, and to all family and those who know me well. Um, it's been a little trying week, um, to say the least, but I'm not here to complain. I'm here to bring God glory through my story, and the story will be once again in this word and we'll be going to Luke 16 verses 19 through 31 will be there at least this week and next week for what the Lord has shown me um, beyond that it's on him but first and foremost father we thank you in the name of Jesus for this opportunity an opportunity to get right with you pray that there be at least one out here right now that is in need of your grace of salvation that is by trusting surrendering their life and their heart to jesus christ we pray that there be one oh lord at least and we pray that those who are fellowshipping that are already in christ share this planting and watering today tomorrow and up until next week if it be your will your grace over our lives that someone else may receive this message and know that it is their time to surrender to Jesus Christ to be right with you and to have the promise of eternal life and also to have the key to the Holy Spirit how to respond to this life where <clears throat> they can be blessed so that they can be a blessing to others we pray father over this word again that you Enlighten us all, oh Lord, because these are trying times and these are testing times. Um, we pray, Father, for those that have fallen off their walk, that there also be at least one that can come back on this day, oh Lord, and make it a grand day and moving forward that all our stories bring you glory. And it's in the name of the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ, that we pray this prayer, thanking you saying amen um, God's hospitality part 16 and we're in the story of Luke uh, chapter 16 I'm gonna go to it right now I'm going to be coming from if this thing ever comes on here the I believe it's the amplified version that uh, the Lord had nailed me to on this subject matter here 
Uh, let's just bring it up here. All right, here we go. Um, not going to read the entire segment. Uh, I'll just stop as the Holy Spirit leads me. Um, this is the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Now, there has been a, uh, might say, a second uh, theme that's been kind of hovering below all these God's hospitality and the full hospitality of Jesus Christ slash God. And that is the question that Luke, I mean, that Jesus uh, asked in Mark 5 when we were dealing with uh, Jesus being mindful of our present in Luke 5 and the account of uh, a, a multi-demon possessed individual when Jesus uh, uh, was approached uh, by the demons was leading the man um, and in their interaction Jesus asked them as he asked all of us who are you okay in this segment here the rich man and Lazarus uh, this is going to be something that I pray that everyone who is listening and whom we pass it to in Jesus name that they can, as my old pastor say, check themselves in the mirror of God's word to identify who they are. Before God Almighty, who are you? And we're going to, as the Lord showed me, uh, dissect this in a couple of different directions. Uh, today we're going to focus, we're going to start focusing on the rich man. Now, I'm going to read the scripture from the Amplified Version, Luke 16. Now, there was a certain rich man who was habitually dressed in expensive purple and fine linen and celebrated and lived joyously in splendor every day. Verse 20, and a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate covered with sores. Verse 21, he eagerly longed speaking of Lazarus, to eat the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now it happened that the poor man died and his spirit was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom or a place called paradise, not the physical bosom of Abraham. This was a place where all the Old Testament believers, uh, they say, under the earth laid awaiting and what they were waiting for was the promise to be fulfilled. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that that promise has been fulfilled. When Jesus went to the cross, um, they couldn't enter into heaven until their, son, their sins had been atoned for. Um, they believed in the promise. Sins were atoned for by Jesus. And he was the one that's in, during his ascension that took them all home to paradise. In today's day, when we pass away, believers go straight to heaven. Absent from the bodies, present with the Lord. That's in Corinthians. Um, so, he was carried away in to, by the angels to Abraham's bosom or paradise, and the rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23, in Hades, the realm of the dead, being in torment, uh, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom or paradise. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in severe agony in this flame. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stop right here. Thank you, Lord. Um, again, we're dealing with, uh, God's hospitality, the full hospitality of Jesus Christ. And he is asking, who are you? Um, by the time you get done with this, will you be the rich man or will you be Lazarus? That is to be seen in the next two to several weeks. Now, uh, this particular uh, parable that Jesus, the story that Jesus is sharing, 
if you go back to Luke chapter 16, uh, verse 14, Jesus was giving an account of the unjust servant. Before that, in Luke 15, he spoke about the prodigal son. Seems to be a little segment of uh, a life of wealth. Okay? Um, now, in 14, chapter 16, verse 14, the Pharisees' response, their reaction to what Jesus had shared, struck a bad nerve. They began to smicker and ridicule, and as they always did in their heart, want to see how can we put this guy to rest? How can we? Uh, that's, that's really what was in their heart uh, all along. Um, to get rid of Jesus, to get rid of this so-called ministry because they just didn't want to buy into it. But something here stood out. They loved money more than God, okay? They loved themselves more than God. They loved their life more than God. If you go into, thank you, El Capitan, uh, Matthew chapter 23, the woe condemnations that Jesus uh, laid down upon the Pharisees and scribes. One of them was that, you know, on the outside, they look good. I mean, they look like, man, like these cats really, really are all in, dug in for the Lord God. On the inside, they're just corrupt. Um, death, true death, is what just lurks inside of them. That's why Jesus told the people, you can do what as the Pharisees say. They're sharing the word of God, that's truth, okay? But do not do what they do. Do not uh, follow after how they do it, okay? Don't. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't have a mirror image of how they go about it, okay? How they're sharing it is one thing, but how they are living it is another. Thank you, Lord. Um, so this is kind of like a response um, to this. You know, the prodigal son, uh, just a real one, two-liner son, second son, the youngest son, who was not supposed to have gotten inheritance first, stepped out to his dad, basically saying, hey, you ain't dying fast enough, dad. Uh, I, I, I need my inheritance now. I got things to do. You just not croaking fast enough. I can't wait. Give me my cheddar and let me go. Father did. And he lived absolutely recklessly. I believe he might have ran through every sin in the book, honestly. Um... And where he found himself at the lowest point in his life was a place that uh, symbolically, according to the Jewish custom, was forbidden um, and also was uh, as classified as unclean, okay? Um, they had a kosher diet and he found himself in a pig sloth. Um, that's a place that when we walk away and don't put God first, we can find ourselves. We can find ourselves in a pig slough of life where we fall to the lowest point of our life because we love doing things our way. We love going about it our way, planning it our way, putting faith in our way, and everything and anything that was coming into our life or part of our life was all first before God Almighty, who gives us the life that we have in the first place, who extends mercy upon us when we sin over and over and over again. He gives us his grace, his loving grace, over and over and over again. Every time we do something wrong, whether we think it, speak it, or do it, amounting to sin against only God. We don't sin against man. We sin against God. If you are here now and look back and see how good he's been to you. Look, I don't want to hear your complaints 
about this, that, that, and the other. Well, you don't know this, that, that, and the other. No. If you are here, alive and breathing, you can comprehend what's coming through this airwave. Count yourself blessed because you could have been left in yesterday or the day before or the year before or the decade before. You could be up here in a whole lot worse condition, but it doesn't matter what condition or what circumstances you're dealing with right now. What matters is how are you going to respond to this season in your life? And what God is simply teaching is if you will but listen from your spirit side, not that evil, wicked, sinful side that he detests. Our flesh will only answer to Satan, will only answer to self, will only be lovers of darkness and sin. And as Proverbs indicates, those who are lovers, okay, and seekers and just bask in the glory of darkness, the proverb says, they, by rejecting, by loving this and rejecting life, and we know that life in the Bible is Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection and the life, okay? The way, the truth, the life, okay? He is life, okay? The eminence of his glory of light, as in John 1 says, is light unto us. That light unto us is life, okay? He is the light of the world, okay? You can't, you, you, there's no switch to turn off Jesus' light, okay? There is no fuse box that you can hit a search, a, 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 a breaker, and kill Jesus' light. There is nothing that you can put uh, to cover, build covers of covers to extinguish Jesus' light. He is the light of the world. He is a light in the darkest place of our life. How do I know that? Because hallelujah! He saved me from the depths of the ultimate darkest point of my life. Had it not been for Jesus, I wouldn't be here. I'd be dead in my sins years ago. And just like this rich man, okay, because I went through this life of being wealthy and having more than what I needed and doing exactly what this rich man did, okay? And a little bit and then some more, okay? Not that I'm giving glory to sin or glory to Satan. I'm just keeping it 100, okay? I was this person probably maybe uh, five, six, seven times over, okay? Adding extra stuff on top of this, okay? So I'm sitting here as a living testimony, okay, of God's active 24 7 active breathing living life-saving uh word of life okay and that life is found in jesus christ okay who is life okay uh, and according i believe it was uh, colossians 2 15 by what he did on the cross he shamed satan and all his army and he proved once and for all. Having Jesus is having power over Satan, over sin, Satan, and death. Okay, as Paul said, oh, say, oh death, where is your sting at? There is no sting from death. I, I see it coming, okay? But what I look at is not that I'm not going to be here no more the way I am, but where I'm going to be, okay? And that is my hope. I pray it be somebody's hope before this hour is over. Nonetheless, um, going back to the scripture, okay, um, this rich man was a man that, in bringing it to 2023, he rolled and strolled, okay, daily, okay, uh, he lacked nothing, there was nothing that he lacked in life with regards to being able to function on the high level of wealth that he had, okay, if you brought him to 2023, the man had islands. He had he he had he had property. He had he was a major real estate mogul. Okay, um, 
He had investments of all sorts, okay? This man was busy, okay? Um, he had authority, okay? Because he had businesses. He had employees, okay? He had an entourage. He had to deal with the paparazzi all around him. The guy had fame, fortune, and power. He was known, okay? Um, clothing? I mean, what? It'd be Louis Vuitton, Versace, Gucci, I don't know. The names go on and on and on. I'm not trying. I'm not here trying to advertise for them. Shoes, the same. I mean, the man could go out there and buy him some uh, five-figure shoes, five-figure outfit. Go out there and buy him a couple Bugattis and who knows what else. Okay, no problems. Okay. Um, he had the jewelry. You, you see the bling blings today. He had bling bling ten times over. Okay. He could go home. H and every day and come out with a new assortment of bling bling. Okay. Um, uh, all the clothing we named, all the uh, good smell good he had. Uh, if it was smokes, he had the, the, the best of the best cigars, the best of the best cigarettes, the best of the best smokes. Okay. Uh, drinks of all sorts, alcoholic drinks. The man had it all. Okay. All kinds of accessories in his vehicles, spending six, seven figures monthly on all kinds of ludicrous spending. I mean, uh, living, okay? Cash, he had an abundance, okay? Never short, okay? Uh, credit cards, all top tier, okay? As a matter of fact, he had no limit because the man was able to pay whatever he spent, okay? The parties, he was, uh, the door was wide open for him and whoever he brought, okay? Tab was extended, okay? Didn't matter if he didn't pay it for three, four, five months. They knew he had it, okay? Uh, clubs, he probably owned several of them, okay? Social events, he probably threw plenty of them, okay? From penthouses to islands to yachts, the man had it all. Women, multiple, okay? Round the clock, okay? In every location he lived, he, he, he owned Women were just there waiting, okay? Women were in the cars. Women were everywhere he went, okay? There's a line that I share with people. It costs to floss. Well, guess what? He could meet the cost very easily and then some to floss, okay? Now, that's just a little snippet of this man, okay? The rich man equated... His possessions and accomplishments, listen to this, as the way to possessing and living in joy and celebrating it, okay? What I've just described about the man in this point, excuse me for not saying, I'm in verse 19, okay? So if you have your book, Luke 16, we're in verse 19, okay? I described kind of like his character, but there's a point here that the Lord showed me that also in verse 19, he looked at his possessions and accomplishments, his, mind you, listen to that, his accomplishments, his possessions as the way to possessing and living in joy and celebrating it daily. Okay, how many people have we known like this through the times? Had it all in one crashing moment suicide, desperate measures of crime, landing them in jail, or landing them in addictions, or landing them in the skid rows of life. Uh, how many of those do we know? Okay. He said, what I have and what I have accomplished, that's my joy. And I live in that and I celebrate that daily. Okay? I worked to get this. I did this. Okay? Key word, I. Okay? He basked in his own glory and not God's. Now, I'm going to share something that the Lord showed me about this. We're talking about a Jewish, a Jew, because uh, 
later on in the passage, okay, you can check it for yourself. When he's dialoguing with uh, Abraham, he asks Abraham to allow Lazarus to go back and testify to his five brothers, okay? And Abraham said they had the law and the prophets. Well, the law was to the Jew, okay? Law was not for the Gentile. It was for the Jews, okay? A prophet was basically a Jew that God handpicked to send a message, which is normally a warning signal, okay, to the nation of Israel, Jews, okay? So, just understand that being a Jew, okay, God, the Lord God, okay, supposed to get the glory, okay? He comes first, okay? And that's how it should be for all mankind, okay? He celebrated, he lived in, he joyed in, okay? He had peace in, okay? But he worshiped all he had and life he had. And all he had accomplished. He, he, he. I, 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 I. Okay? But in, in, in basking in his own glory, he did not bask in God's glory. He, he's giving glory to all he has accomplished. All he has done. By his hands. By his might. By his strength. By his capabilities. Okay? By his mental and, and abilities, okay? He did this, okay? And he's glorifying it, but not glorifying God who gave him the life in the first place, who gave him the abilities, okay, in the first place, who put his grace over him no matter how sinful he lived, okay? Because there was nothing about this cat that's bringing glory to God, okay? He's in absolute opposition lifestyle, okay? Opposition mentally, opposition in his heart to God's word, okay? And if you're there right now, okay, if you, what you're hearing kind of is defining you so far, and Jesus asks, who are you? Well, keep following this because this is the rich man, okay? And, and, and understand one point that I will share this with this is you don't have to be monetarily wealthy to be this person, okay? The quintessential point of this is that right here, he's living a life for his glory and not God's. He's living for self and not for God, okay? He wakes up for self and not for God. He goes through his day not for God, okay? He, he gains, okay? He, he, he wheels and deals and he gains. He profits for himself and not for God, okay? He sought, still in verse 19, to be looked up to, okay? To be worshipped, okay? And he never looked to worship. People that are lovers of themselves, lovers of what they are accomplishing, think about it. Are you this type of person? You wake up every day and you never have a moment, you know what, a desire, okay, from your heart to really thank the Lord. To be appreciative, thankful, and grateful, okay? Not that you get up and you read a scripture and you spend a little devotional time. I mean, that's good. Don't get me wrong. But a step further, okay? I want to get closer. I want to be used. I have in mind the world constantly. I mean, like, that's the one thing as Christians that we should do. We should have the world in our minds, Okay? Should be somebody we should pray for, some segment, some location, okay? But are you the type of person that you wake up, you go through your day, 
you end your day, you end your night busy. I know some folks like this. They work, they work, they work. I work, but I'm constantly having my mind on the Lord. Okay, because if I don't, I'm going to fall apart. I've already said it. I tell that to everybody. My family, everybody know me. If I don't keep my mind on Jesus Christ, if I don't keep my mind on God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, okay, I'm dead in the waters. Okay? There, there, there's, no, there's nothing up ahead for me. Okay? I'm, I'm just dead in the waters. Okay? I can't accomplish what I'm accomplishing. I can't do what I'm doing right now without them three. Okay? I can't go through my day having compassion and understanding okay i can't go through my day having mercy i can't go through my day forgiving people that do me wrong okay and that's a constant with me i got demons surrounding me left and right everywhere i go okay because what they want to do is they want to get me away from the father son and spirit they want to get me away from what the lord has me doing for him to bring in glory through my story, okay, and fall back in the world as I once was, okay. He looked, and that's how most people are today. Look at the internet. Oh my God! Thank you, Capitan. What do you got? The Twitters, the Facebooks, that book, this book, uh, was Instagram, FaceTime. This chat, that chat. They got so many chat lines. It's it's ridiculous. Okay? How you can uh, post yourself out there. Okay? And all of a sudden, what most people look for. I mean, look at on YouTube. The insanity of what people are doing. Okay? Look at TV. The insanity of reality shows. Okay? People willing to neglect their bodies. Okay? No respect for their bodies. No, Just live in shame for a moment of what? What are you gaining out of it? Money. Fame. Everybody wants to have a brand. I, I, and then I, I need followers. I, I need, you know, you want people to worship you. People to look up to you. People to envy you. People to just put you on a pedestal. We have God-like mindsets in this evil flesh. But we want to be elevated. Okay. People look at look at some of these actors and entertainers. They disappear and they come back. I mean, I, I'm not going to a concert to hear a song that's been sang 20 or 30 years ago. You don't sound like that. It's it's a record playing. They, they just never get enough of being up here and people looking up there. No, we're supposed to look here to the true and living God. Okay. What is your purpose? Do you know what your purpose is in this life? If your purpose is simply to get a, uh, a degree, to, to, to get this nonprofit started, to get, uh, what do they call that? This grant, that grant, this loan, uh, start this business, buy this property, get this building, uh, get this. Get, if that's your life, I mean to tell you, you're in the wrong direction. Because I share this. Where's God at in this? And I'm not talking about, oh, I like to thank God. No, 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 no. Where is God? Jesus. Where is Jesus in your life? And I don't want to hear that you go to service or, or you don't feel like going to service. You'll go when you want to. You, you hear, you read when you want to, or I do this, or I do that, or I'm going to quiet it. Ah! Jesus said, he, oh, sorry, Jesus simply asked one thing. You heard it last week. Will you walk with me? By walking with Jesus, You've left yourself. That's what he told Abraham. You need to detach from yourself, from your life, from everything that comes first, second, third, everything that's coming before me. You need to separate yourself from that. Okay? And then after you separate yourself, meaning you, you deny it, you let it go. Okay? Because you're trusting 
and what you're hearing from me. Okay? And a lot of times we're stuck in this life because we ain't hearing from God. And we're not hearing nothing from God because our ears are closed, our minds are closed. We have this resistance to what God has to say. Because what God has to say is going to be in opposition to what we do. Okay? That's why Paul said, uh, thank you, Capitan. What I should go do, I don't do. But what I should not do, I go do. Is that war within us? Okay? The flesh and the spirit. Okay? He sought to be looked up to, to be needed, to be that popular, that popular brand of brands, okay? Wherever he went, he was the one that was happening, okay? And yeah, he had a following, okay? He had his paparazzi, he had his clique, okay? You know? People like that want to be looked up to. And after a while, they want to be worshipped. They want to be the one that have the answers. They have the one that is, it's about me. Okay? He sought to be looked up to, but not to look to. Many people are living like that. But when they have a moment of moments, and you will have one up ahead. Okay? I pray that it not be this rich man's faith, okay? That that faith that fell upon him be not you, okay? But are you heading in this direction? Is this who you are? Because if it is, I'm here to tell you, you're on the wrong road. And I don't care how much money you're making, who you are, what your brand is, what you sell, how much you make, this and that. If that is what you worship, that is what you look to, that is what you are about, you on the wrong direction. Okay. Verse 20 and 21. Okay. What we read about is that the rich man thought about and simply lived for self. Okay. We just touched on that a little while ago. They laid Lazarus at his doorstep. And day after day, he came and he went. He came and he went. He came and he went. He refused to put his life up, put his life down to be a blessing. Here's the Lord who has blessed him with this monumental wealth, and he's doing just as the prodigal son did, okay? And he's being reckless, just like the uh, uh, unjust servant, okay? These are stories that show a pattern, okay? Money has something to do with all these stories, okay? He had an opportunity to be a blessing with all God blessed him with, but he chose rather than being a blessing, he chose to be blessed, Is this who you are? are? Are you living for you? You know, I hear there are all kinds of, of lines that are in the world that just amount to get yours, do yours, by any means necessary. You know, you have to get the money. You have to get the money. And it's never enough. People are like crack addicts for money, okay? They will do anything and everything, and their life revolves around money, when they get money, they have to buy this, they have to go here, they have to shop, they have to go uh, to this bar, they have to go to this restaurant, they have to put away, they have to order this, order that. It never, ever stops, okay? And then after they do that, here come the bills. Now they got to get more money, more money. It just never stops. The madness never stops. It's a life about self. Jesus said in order to walk with him, first and foremost, you got to surrender to him, 
Okay, once you surrender to him to be saved, you got to stay surrendered so that you can listen, learn, and live like him, walking with him through the Holy Spirit, okay, who, who walks with you, leads you, guides you, directs you, who's there as a friend, who's there as a comforter, who's there as a teacher, who's there to convict you when you know you're doing something wrong. Okay, when you know you've done something wrong, when you're on the wrong direction, when you're not doing what God has asked of you, okay? Choice is what he gives us, okay? Here's the a point about verse 20 and 21 that stands out, okay? In living for himself... And not willing to be that blessing to Lazarus at his uh, when they were both alive, okay? Because in the scriptures you'll read that they both eventually do die, okay? Um, one thing that stood out about about the rich man was, and this is a, a something that unfortunately is dark and it's ugly, and you see it in society. It might be you out there that to help a, to help another person hurts you does it hurt you to sacrifice of yourself to help somebody else does it hurt you to be a blessing to another person it could be a stranger it could be a, a neighbor it could be someone young someone old someone disabled someone able okay does it hurt you to help them me as a Christian I always have the ability to help somebody because the greatest help I'm going to give them is to point them to Jesus Christ, who will not only hear them out, but he's be willing to clean them up, get them right, and lead them down the right road, okay? And in doing that, teach them how to be a blessing, how to be willing to help another person and not hurt them. When we are not willing to help another person, we're further hurting them, okay? And then when we help another person, we help them. We don't, we don't help another person and say, it hurt me, okay? We help them and say, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for putting me in a position to be a blessing almighty lord to bless another person but this man here like majority of people on earth lived for self and to help another was to hurt them you see that in the, in the movie industry in the music industry in the tv industry people get uh, you know they get famous and man, they, most of them they, they ain't trying to help nobody else and they, 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 they about themselves most people that are successful, that are doing it the way that, they, I mean, they're really doing it, they're by themselves, man. They're not trying to turn around and help masses, let alone maybe one. And this man right here just couldn't find the time. Uh, let me just say this. Couldn't find it in his heart to help this poor man. And, you know, in their, in their uh, culture, okay, it was known to look out after those in need. If you had in abundance, okay, it was implored by God Almighty that you be a blessing to those in need. Okay? Who did Jesus come for? He told them, he told he told the religious leaders of Pharisees, I didn't come for those that are right. Okay? I came for those that were in need. If God Almighty, ooh, thank you, Capitan. If God Almighty, who is the most wealthiest person known, there is nobody more wealthier than God. Okay? But if that eternally wealthy individual who no Wall Street crash could could even put a put a dot on his wealth to, 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 to lose, okay? If that eternally wealthy person 
could come down here to look out for those that were in need. And then when he helped those in need, rather than saying, Father, Spirit, let's have a meeting here. You know, it's going to cost. Listen, oh, thank you, Lord. When, when Jesus was before the, 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 the thousands that were following him, and he said, feed them. He told that to his disciples. They were like, man, it's going to take an army of children to feed these folks. We ain't got that much. Where are we going to get this kind of loot from? Well, if this God didn't go to, the, if the Father, Son, and Spirit didn't have that kind of meeting saying, well, you know, it's going to cost to take care of these sinful bandits down here, this reckless crew of wicked, daily wicked individuals who going to keep just not thanking me. They're not going to thank us. They're not going to bless us. They're not going to worship us. They're not going to look for us. They're not going to surrender to us. They're not going to want to walk with us. They're not going to want to serve us. They're not going to want to be used by us to help the rest of them. Man, it's going to cost, man. What if God had that meeting? And he said, you know what? Man, it's going to cost too much to take care of this reckless crew of sinners down here on earth. I don't think we could afford this. But oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't think that way. Thank you, Lord, that when you had that meeting before anything was, including us, you said there's going to come a time where we three here, eternally wealthy, We'll have to fit, put this plan in motion to help them poor folks down there. And then when we make them rich, whoo -hoo, they ain't going to claim it was me. It was them. They're not going to look and say, I, I, I. They're not going to live the life for I. No, 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 no. When we truly bless them with the wealth that we got, they're going to do this. Eyes open. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. I, I surrender, Lord. I want to walk with you. I want to learn about you. I want to be more like you. Because I understand the wealth that you have blessed me with. You've, you've opened up my eyes to a new way of thinking. You, you've opened up my eyes to a new uh, way of living. You, you've opened up my eyes to what this word in the dictionary is called purpose. You've opened up my eyes to this thing called learning, listening and learning about you and living for you and, and living in you and you living in me. And, and you've opened up my eyes that it, it's not about what I can obtain on my own down here. It, 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 it's about how much by just sitting still I can obtain from you from up there to down here because you, you brought yourself down here you brought you brought your eternal wealth down here to this poor stricken earth full of poor stricken spirits to make them wealthy wealthy in a way where we don't bask like this man here okay in our glory we will bask in a hallelujah glory to you through our story because we are Rich because you are in us. That wealth that you possess, a grace of salvation. There's no price tag that you can put on that particular uh, free gift. It, it, he didn't come down here to negotiate at the table with us to tell us, well, how much do you have? Well, Lord Jesus, I got to pay my rent. I'm a little bit behind, but I got about a dollar. Well, I got two dollars I can give you from that. Well, Lord Jesus, hold on. I might need a little something back from that because I got a little, uh, another bill here called the light, called the gas. Uh, well, I can, I can trim it down. And by the time you finish sitting at the table with Jesus and negotiating to purchase his, that, that gift of salvation, you'd be like, Lord, I ain't got nothing, 
I, I might have all these properties. I might have all these investments. I might have all this in life insurance and annuities and in, and in 401ks and in mutual and all kinds of stock investments. Uh, I might be at the top five on Forbes list, but Lord, I'm doing a Donald Trump. I, I really don't have nothing to offer. And you know what the Lord would say to a Donald Trump and to all those down here on earth? I didn't come to the table to get something from you. I came to the table to give you something from me. And what I'm going to give you ain't going to cost you nothing. Free? Lord, it's it, it free? Yes, it's free. We planned it before we planned for you. Knowing that in planning for you, you were going to rebel against us. You were going to take the grace of life that we gave you freely. And day after day after day, we gave you that life. And you were going to continue to sin against us over and over. And, 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 and master sin rather than master righteousness. Well, I'm here to give you the blessing called righteousness if you just but. Stop looking to yourself. Stop looking to your family. Stop looking to your spouse. Stop looking to your neighbors. Stop looking to your homies and homies. Stop looking to those uh, what you call friends. Okay. Stop looking to the counselors. Stop looking to the therapist. Stop looking to the psychiatrist. Stop looking at the TV. Stop looking at the movies. Stop looking at the magazines and looking on the internet. Stop looking, 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 and looking here, looking there, looking here, looking there, and just but look up there. Because up there is an answer to everything you got going on in your life right now that has you hung up, strung up, and just for one moment from being pulled up. And that's it. You lynch yourself. Okay? Life lynched you. Okay? And you know why life is lynching you? That noose is getting tighter and tighter around you? It ain't because of this and that and this and that. It's because you pulling on it. The decisions you keep making is pulling that rope down and hanging you up higher and higher. Well, don't wait till you hear this start to snap and all of a sudden you're up in the air and you're gasping and you know it's just but a moment before you breathe your last. But all you got to do is let go of that rope say, Lord, drop me that rope, that rope of life. I surrender. I, I, tie me up to you, O oh Lord. Tie me to your word, O oh Lord. Tie it on my heart, O oh Lord. And lead me down that road. That I don't look to be worshipped. I look to worship. That I don't look to, for my own glory, I look to give you, bring you glory, okay? I don't bask in all that I've accomplished because I realize I've accomplished nothing. Because at the end, in doing it my way, it leads to no way, but one way, and that's hell. And, and, and the way I want to go is through you, Jesus Christ, because you are the way. You are the way to the greatest way, and that is life with you in heaven. And Lord Jesus, I'm here to tell you, I surrender. The Lord Jesus had a meeting, Father, Son, and Spirit, way back then, that there was going to come a time that those eternal individuals were going to put a plan for us broke folks. And we are broke. Why? Because our spirits have no home. We have no home. This is not home. Home is heaven. That is our home. If you don't have Jesus, you really are homeless right now. If you don't have Jesus, you truly are broke. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. I pray that there be somebody out there that's at least heard enough. We're going to be back at this next week to say, you know what, Lord? You got me thinking. And you got me coming to surrender. Because I know you love me and you forgive me. And he does. I'm Pastor Joseph from the Lighthouse Ministry. I love you. Jesus was God loves you. 
May that love carry you with his grace until next week here, closer to them. Be blessed.